Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola here, coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So, we've had a conversation about the apps that these are, the inverter runs, and a lot of us are, were of the belief that the Luxpa app was much better than the DE app. So, the DE uses Solarman. Luxpa, I, I believe, uses their own proprietary um, app, and the app works pretty well. You can use both the uh, you can use both the phone or a laptop to make adjustments to the settings on the Lux Power app. The DE has two apps, so let me show you the one that everybody sees, right? So here's the one you see. It gives you details, um, tells you what the AC output is, show, shows you what your daily generation your daily generation monthly annual, and then it also shows you. Um, what is coming out from each string, PV1, PV2, the voltage and the uh, generation. And then it shows you what uh, voltage your inverter is, gener is producing, 220 watts, uh, the current. And then it shows you if you have the grid. If you have the grid, it shows you what's coming from the grid. In my case, I do not have the grid, as you can see. So my numbers should be uh, zero or some static number that it makes up. As you could see, I can collapse that. Let me sorry, collapse that, and then it shows you the battery. So here is my battery. Shows you um, what the state of charge is, how much current is being pushed into the battery, and the uh, state of charge. So in this case, seventy-five percent. It shows you how much I've charged today into the batteries for, and then I'm taking two kilowatt hours out of the batteries. And then it gives you additional parameters like consumption. My consumption is 861. And it shows you that I've used 4.90 kilowatt hours today. And then we go further down. It shows you your BMS. Uh, my BMS currently will charge at the full 50 amps and discharge at full 50 amps. Um, that number will change. That number started at 6. The number for the it will start at 60 and then it slowly decline till it gets down to 20. The old one will limit it to a lower number, but now I have more batteries, it would let me go down to, it, let, it only goes down to 20, it doesn't go lower than 20 anymore. So that's this version of, um, that's this version of Solarman. So it allows you to see some detailed data, let me take you a little further down. It shows you numbers from um, the morning, your PV production and your PV voltage. And then you, add, you could add, select additional parameters you want to add, um, battery state of charge, um, voltage of PV2, you know, you select one. So let me see if I could find one parameter to add, and then we can monitor that. Bear with me. I don't have grid. Um, consumption, let's see consumption. Consumption watts. Um, consumption current. Consumption voltage. So let's see if that's this number. Total consumption. Yep, here we go, consumption power. So I confirm. And then click on here, and you see it's added that number. So before, we only had two items we're monitoring. Now I've added a third. And right here, it shows you what your consumption numbers are. So let me get close enough so you can see it. It tells you at that specific time what the consumption numbers are. So now I'm going to show you the pro version, um, the version that I, as an installer, will use. And I show you the additional details. And I show you that I can make adjustments, do firmware updates, read what the inverter is doing, change settings on the inverter. So yes, I can do the same thing you can do with the Lux Power using my laptop on Solarman Pro. So here is the pro version. It's loading. Um, it tells you the time. Hope you can read it. And then it shows you different parameters you can look at. So here it shows you um, our capacity. Sorry, what it is: residential rooftop energy energy storage energy storage system, my installed capacity, uh, percentage of self use. You know all all that stuff. And then, sorry, I'm moving a little too fast. It shows you what I have done today, generation-wise. And then it shows you what my sun hours are. So as I scroll, you see that it gives me a whole lot more data. 
here is what my PV is doing, it's showing you my production. Let me see if I can show you what my peak is. My peak right now is 1,000. Sorry, I think that number is wrong. Sorry, let's look at this. Here. Yep. Oops, sorry. My peak is 3,070 watts. I've hit 3,070 watts at some point today out of 4,500. And then I go further down and then it gives me additional information. So it shows me what my daily production is, uh, monthly, yearly, and total. This only gives me for the month. So it gives it to me on a month by month basis. I started this up a few, uh, I think sometime last week. So you see the columns are blank except that one there. It tells me what my environmental and economic benefits are. Um, total amount, total, total yields. So here we are. So it gives you environmental benefits. Um, my benefits in local currency, CO2 emissions, trees planted, whatever that means. But it gives me a whole lot more detail than I get from the other one. And then here. I don't have any subsystems installed. It gives you weather forecast. This weather forecast has really sucked. I know where it's pulling it from, but they promised us rain. We get rain, but not during the day. So yes, you might be correct. And then here, it gives you some more info. So it shows me what my daily consumption is. I've consumed 4.9 kilowatt hours. Playing the shows... desktop GT13 FR3. And then it shows me, um, what is happening as of when I logged into the server. You see my production from my PV. You see my battery percentage was going to the batteries. You see what my consumption is at 61. And you see from the grid zero. So that's information that I like the way it puts it together. And then as you see from the grid, all zero have not purchased anything. All this is related to the grid. I don't have anything on the grid column. And then the battery shows you what I've done. A battery state of charge how much I'm putting into the batteries right now. Bear with me real quick, let me turn. So it shows I've charged four kilowatt hours and then I discharged two kilowatt hours. So it shows you what it is for this month so far. So it gives you a lot of, a lot of, a lot of detail. These are the kind of, this kind of data I usually get from my Victron. And then this is the one I like. These beautiful color thingies. So I can choose what parameters I want to see but I'm just choosing, um, so here it goes, it shows you um, what out of my daily production of 6.3 kilowatts, 77% has gone to self-use, which is to power my consumption, and then 22%, 22.2% 22 has gone to charge my batteries. And then it shows you 100% production, uh, my consumption of 4.9 kilowatts, Came 100% from production. I didn't. I didn't purchase any power. And then finally, my charts. My charts are tracking my production, my consumption, and my state of charge. The yellow is my battery. The red is my consumption, and the blue is my production. So hopefully this gives you. Oh, oh, sorry. Let's go somewhere else because you want to see how I can make adjustments. So subsystem devices. So we'll click on subsystem devices because what you were looking at before was the logger. Now I want to go to the inverter, which is what we want to see. So inverter. And then it opens a new dialog box. And then in the inverter, it shows you some of the same information, but now I have one more item I can access, right? So I click on here and it says check system. Next to it is to do firmware updates. So bear with me, check system. Oops. Okay, this is where I was before, sorry. Um, system sub devices. Inverter. Let me pause. It. Okay, sorry, wrong button. So here is check system, which is what we just did. And then next to it, let me see if you can see that, next to it is device control. So that's what we want to do. So device, and then next to it is firmware update. So we're going to go to device control. We click on device control, and then it opens a new dialog window. Sorry, it's a little slow. 
but you'll understand what I'm trying to say. So it's showing the inverter is online, control log. So now we want to read this inverter, right? So let's read it. So we click read. Read. And then it sh it sh it sh blah. you see what it shows us. So we have um, VMS lithium battery. Uh, battery empty voltage is 45. Battery amp hour capacity is 100. So that's incorrect. It's actually 150 amp hours. So let me change that. So 150. 150. This is my inverter. Yes, I think it is. 150. And then float voltage. I'm not going to change that because the BMS will manage that. And then I click setup. And then there's a timeout. It takes about um, 30 seconds. Timeout. So here you go. You see it's doing a countdown. Um, 13. So it's done. So let's read it again and see what it says. Read. Sorry, wrong button. Read. And let's see what that information, the correct information is now. Twelve thirteen. So you see, there is a type. There is a countdown timer right there. So it's done. So now it's corrected the readings, and then you scroll down here to see what other readings you can change. Battery settings to your charge current. So let's read and see what is currently on the inverter. So as you can see on the inverter it says max charge 70, battery restart percentage is 27, uh, max discharge current is limited to 75 amps, battery shutdown is 15, um, battery low is 20. So that's the setting, the current setting on the inverter. And then you can go there and read um, your systems works mode is where you do your um, time of use, you can set up time of use. Um, we can do so much different stuff but all those settings that are available on the screen are also available here and I can change them from this screen here. So if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. Uh, this is information coming to you from the DAE inverter and the ability to make adjustments on the fly online as long as the inverter is connected to the internet. Thank you for watching. If you're